You're tuning in to Feli's Fishbowl, a marketing podcast for the entrepreneur that wants to create a feel-good business model. On this show, you'll be given the permission slip you've been missing to make that change and start building the business you originally dreamed about. Stick around for solo and interview episodes talking all things content creation and marketing. Sound good to you? Let's dive in. Okay, this episode's going to be a little different than the ones that I've been putting out so far. I've been feeling really called to record more episodes because I got a lot to say. Um, but this is something that is on my heart recently, and I wanted to share it with you all because I want to show you that you're not alone in this, but also help you see how you can be a better client and make the most of your investments. Because I would see the narrative all the time from these coaches who are like, I times 10 every investment that I make. I make back every investment that I make. I've never regretted an investment. And I am someone who has regretted so many of the investments I've made. And that is because I am an impulse buyer first. Um, I tend to like go down these rabbit holes where I find myself just looking at every single offer. I'm literally in this spiral right now, which is probably why I want to record this. But I'll look at every single offer and think that's perfect for me. And, you know, I have made investments that were good and paid off and the offers were great. But a lot of the times what ends up happening is I haven't like vetted the program. I haven't actually looked into it to see like, is this actually something that I need and want? Or am I looking at this from a place of scarcity? And with all of, not all. With a lot of my lower ticket investments that I made in the first two years of my business, yes, they were made from a place of scarcity. And that is why I have some regrets in my investment journey. That's a story for another day. But what I wanted to talk about today and the whole purpose of this episode is that I had to learn how to be coached. And what I mean is like I invested in one-on-one coaching. I've invested in like high level masterminds, but it wasn't until this year that I started to understand like it wasn't them. It was me. I'm the reason why I didn't 10 times my investment. You know, like there's, there's more to it than that. But I remember talking to a coach at the beginning of the year and saying like, I want a coach that follows up with me because So many times I get triggered in our conversations or because I'm an open head center, I come with a hundred ideas. This is if you're familiar with human design, I am a six slash two constantly bombarded by ideas for offers I could put out, programs I could do, platforms I could launch on, videos I could create, captions I could write. It is, it's overwhelming. And so I noticed in some of my longer term coaching containers before with my coaches that every single call that I came to, say every two weeks we had a call, every time I'd get on the call, I'd be like, I had this great idea. And the coach would be like, okay, like, how are you going to approach it? What do you want to do? Da, 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 da. And so when at the beginning of this year, when I was talking to this other coach that I was thinking about working with, I was like, look, I have so many ideas and sometimes I just need someone to tell me no. I need you to tell me to just concentrate on what I'm already doing. Concentrate on the offer that I said I wanted to sell because that's what I actually want to sell. And either I'm looking at this new thing because I'm feeling defeated and I'm not seeing the results I want, or I'm distracted, I'm looking for a distraction, and I'm it's not actually a good idea at the time. Or sometimes it is a good idea, but it's a not a not right now idea. You know, I have a notes app graveyard full of VIP days. I do not have a VIP day. I would like to say I'll have one in 2023. I cannot guarantee that because I have had so many ideas for VIP days. And half the time, they're just ideas, you know? They're not something that I actually need to act on or even want to act on. Just because it's something that I could do doesn't mean it's actually in alignment with my business or something that I should do looking at my Black Friday right now. (laughs) Um, Not to point fingers at myself. Like I know my faults now though. But in the beginning, when I first started, I was like coming to these coaches with full trust 
that like every time the coach said, that's a great idea. How are you going to approach it? How are you going to market it? Where does this fit into your product suite? I got answers to all of it, but I just needed someone to say no to me. In two parts, learning how to be coached, learning how to be a good client and how to make the most of my investments came in the form of recognizing like what I need from a coach. And personally, I do need some form of one-on-one container, one-on-one touch point. But I also really, really like watching other people because like I said, sometimes I retreat. And so in that point, just sometimes I retreat. If you get, if I get triggered, if I am feeling overwhelmed and, and, and anxious, if there's a lot going on in my life, I will retreat within myself. I will pull back from the container. And this is something that has also really frustrated with, also really frustrated me with my investments because then at the end of the investment, I'm like, I didn't make the most of it because I didn't talk to my coach for X amount of weeks while I was retreating in my shell. When I now work with a coach, I say, this is how I respond to being triggered. Please reach out to me. And like, no, it's not their responsibility to be on top of me and to make sure that I'm doing good. Like as a coach, you hire them for a specific thing. If I hired you to help me with my marketing, it's not on you to check on my mental health every two weeks. You know, if if you haven't heard from me from a week since our last call, it, it's not your responsibility. It's my responsibility. I know that. But I like to know that I can trust my coach to help me get out of the hole I put myself in. So basically me learning to be a good coach was learning what I need to look for a coach, but also learning that it's okay to put myself out there in coaching containers, that just because I don't see other people engaging and asking questions doesn't mean I can't. Um, Like I was in a high level mastermind in 2021 and there was no community aspect to it. I would talk to some of the girls in the DMs because I'm that person. I want to get to know everyone in the container, but there was no group conversations. There was no one coming forward saying, hey, this is what I'm working on. What do you think about? It was everyone was in, I guess, their own boxers talking to the coach, right? And it didn't work for me because I never turned to the coach to ask questions. And part of it was because sometimes you don't know what to ask. And so when you see someone else saying, I'm having this problem, or I'm working through this, or I want to do this, it kind of triggers it within you to do it. But at the same time, and at the same time, I just didn't know how to ask for support. I didn't know how to say, like, I brought all these ideas to you, and I don't know what I'm doing because I'm not making any sales, you know? And so... Now, now I'm in a super great mastermind like this. I'm talking like at least a year ago. I took a long time off of investing in programs because of how I felt by the end of 2021 with all of the investments I've made and feeling like feeling burned, feeling like I hadn't seen any return on investment. And like some of them, it was me and some of them, it was that it wasn't a good match. And yeah, I can be upset. Like, why did you accept me in the program when it wasn't meant for me? Like. I feel like potentially some people were operating out of alignment, but at the same time, maybe people saw things in me that I didn't see, you know, so I don't regret any of my investments. They've all led me here, but I did for a long time harbor a lot of feelings (laughs) around the investments that I made. And it wasn't until I guess maybe it was June. Yeah, it must have been June of this year, 2022 that I invested in a low ticket, eight week mastermind program with this high, she's a high level entrepreneur. I really respect her and what she does in this space. And she's one of those people that's like, I always want my programs to be accessible to people. So compared to some of the things I've invested in, it was so low ticket and so accessible to me. And I made myself a bet because I had been eyeing the same coach who's now my coach for months, potentially a year, over a year, probably over a year that I wanted to hire her as my one-on-one coach. But because her investment was the same amount as the high-level mastermind I was in in 2021, I had so much like trauma around that investment number because I felt 
like I hadn't seen any return on investment. And I was like, I cannot invest five figures again to not see an, a, a return. You know, like I'm not made of money, people. <laughs> I am running a business and yes, it is growing, but not at the rate that I want all the time, you know? And so it's like to just jump into another five figure investment when I'm still feeling burned from the first one, it, it was a scary thing to me. So I challenged myself. I said, if I can show up for the eight weeks of this program, I'm going to attend every call. I'm going to be in Slack asking questions. I'm going to be on the co-working. I'm going to be on the, um, I'm going to attend the open office hours. And I told myself if I can show up and I see results and I make moves and learn things in this eight weeks, then I'm ready to invest in the dream coach that I've been looking at for so long. And sure enough, by actually sitting down with myself and saying, like, these calls are non-negotiable. They're on my calendar. If the Frenchman asked me to have lunch, sucks to be him. I got somewhere to be. It's the same as a sales call. It's the same as a one-on-one -on -one call for me. I've invested in this time. Like, this is my schooling, you know? And same for the Slack channel. This program had homework every two weeks. And at one point, I got discouraged because nobody else was posting their homework which is something that happens to me a lot, but I see that nobody else is engaging. And so then I don't engage because I'm like, well, I don't want to seem like too much. Nobody else is doing it. And it's like, no, like I paid for this space. I don't care if you're not using it. I'm going to use it. Like she's not spending her time on you so she can have, she can spend it all on me. Right. And so I did all my homework. I was active in the Slack channel. I attended every channel or sorry, I attended every call. And by the end of the program, I felt so good about my ability to be coached. And so when my dream coach approached me, said that she, was in, she wasn't offering one-on-one -on -one anymore. It was only the mastermind, which was enrolling, at, enrolling in September. And it was kind of like then or wait till March to work with her. I hadn't worked one-on-one -on -one with someone in over a year at that point. So I was like, okay let's go for it, like rip it off like a band-aid as I do with probably too many things in my life. And I am fully getting my value. It's almost three months into this mastermind. And yeah, I show up for every call. I haven't missed a call. I have been watching the trainings in the portal. That's something that I didn't used to do. I would never watch modules in a portal. It was, it's, it's not my style of learning. I'd rather ask questions. I'd rather be taught live, but when you have access to things, you should use them. And I think it's something that I took for granted in past investments that I was like, yeah, okay, I can watch these whenever I have her now for this period of time. So I'll refer back to these later, but it's like, no, those videos are there for you to learn and then ask questions while you're with them, not after the fact. So Maybe I sound like a terrible entrepreneur, like a terrible student. I was a terrible student. I hated school. I knew school was a joke when I was in school. Like, side rant here. I've known that high school was a joke since probably about grade 10. The system is, like, it's not functioning well. The problem is that nobody questions it. I questioned everything. I was very rebellious as a teenager. I probably still am a bit too rebellious to this day when it comes to governments and systems. <laughs> But the way it worked in my high school, I grew up in BC, Canada, so I don't know for anybody else, this might just be BC, this might just be my town, you know, but the way that it worked was you needed a certain amount of credits to graduate, grade 12, and you needed English 12. You also needed a, a science 11, but it could be any science, and you needed a math 11, but it could be any level of math, there was three levels, and then... I think also social studies 11 and potentially a second language, but I don't know if everyone had to take a second language because I was French immersion. So my rules were a bit different. But so basically by the time I got to grade 12, I was at the place where I could graduate. It didn't matter what I took other than English 12. Everything else was extra. I was already qualified to graduate as long as I passed English 12. And so I did not give a fuck. Like, I cannot preface that enough when I was in grade 12. Sorry if anyone in my family listens, but like there was a strike that year. And so the teachers weren't allowed to take attendance. And the way that they got 
they're like their loophole to get kids to go to class was that if you missed a certain amount of days or a certain amount of classes, you weren't allowed to walk in the graduation ceremony. But because the strike and the teachers couldn't take your attendance, I could skip class and it couldn't affect my graduation, my ability to walk because nobody would know. It wasn't recorded. And so any class that I would walk into, if there was a substitute teacher, I would walk back out. The only class I cared about getting good grades in was English 12. Everything else was a joke to me. I treated it like a joke. I took joke classes. I fought administration on the fact that I was only allowed one free block. I was like, I have the credits to graduate. I literally could only show up to grade 12. I could literally only show up to English 12. What do you care if I don't take seven other classes, you know? Obviously, I didn't win that battle. So instead, I just took classes. Like, my school had the most ridiculous my school had the most ridiculous electives whenever i tell people about the electives my school offered they're like what the actual hell so i took in my grade 12 year accounting which was really good and i wish i'd taken it in grade 11 because there was two levels to it but i only took accounting 11. in grade 11 i took law 12. we had a law class we had accounting we had marketing we had i took a a travel and tourism class in grade 10 which was amazing and then they canceled it because there weren't enough students which pissed me off um I took chef's class which was cooking for the cafeteria food I also took foods 12 advanced I took advanced cooking 12 because ed, like cooking class was a joke in my school but the chef's class was like where it's at um I took comparative civilizations which is basically a fun take on social studies where you just look at like past civilizations and then I had English 12 I think that was it but but all of this to say is that I wasn't a great student because I knew how to cheat the system and potentially I entered entrepreneurship being like yeah I can just attend or I can passively consume this content that I've paid for and get by maybe you can tell I never went to university <laughs> but it's not how it works. You can't passively attend your investment in a coach or in a program or in a mastermind. You need to actively be a participant to get the information and for it to affect your business. And so that's where I'm at now. Three years into business, I figured it out. I would say I figured it out about a year and a half. Let's give me some credit. Um, but so if you're struggling, if you're someone who feels constantly burned by the investments you make, or you see these people who started at the same time as you, and they're like, I 10 times every single investment I make, I want you to reflect on how you're showing up in those containers. And first, like check, are these containers actually how you like to learn? Are these coaches actually aligned and in integrity with the business you want to be growing? Because that's another problem when we're, if you're a service provider and you're investing in coaches that only coach. But yeah, just like asking yourself, like, how can I show up more to get more? And maybe you need to have a conversation with your coach. Maybe it should be like me where I said, like, I will ghost you if you trigger me. Not because I want to, but because I don't know how to do anything else. So please, all I need is one message. Haven't heard from you in a minute. What's going on? What happened after our last talk? Did you do the homework I gave you? You know, like just one nudge is all I need and I'll come back. And all I need is the coach that will take that moment to give me a nudge and not every coach will. So before you make your next, next investment, I know like we're in crazy holiday Black Friday season. So there's a lot flying at you. And I think this this episode is perfect for all of us who are eyeing all those offers and wondering, do I actually need this? Or am I looking at this from a place of scarcity? Because nine times out of 10, it is. I know how to sell. I know how to market. Why am I looking at sales programs? <laughs> so I'm going to leave it there. Honestly, I think these podcasts are just going to get more and more vulnerable as I go because I've reached this point where I have no shame and I have nothing to hide. So I'm like, Let's just let it all out there. Let's just tell you every mistake I made. I know I want to record an episode next on my journey with starting my agency because that was a shit show. And I feel like only now, three years in, has it been cleaned up. So that's expect, expect to hear from that one. And please, if you have been listening and you like these shows, these episodes, 
Let me know what you liked, what you want to hear more of. Please take the time to leave a rating and review, whether it's on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts. It really helps my show continue to rank and be found by lovely people like you. And that's all I have for you for this episode. If you enjoyed listening, please leave a review, rate, subscribe, whatever it is that your listening platform tells you to do for the shows that you love. If you head down to the show notes, you will find links to follow us on Instagram at Belly Day and at Belly Fishbowl. I've also added the link to sign up for my workbook, 10 Alternative Ways to Market, for all of you who are looking for new ways to market your business in a feel-good way. Trust me, it's a good one. And please, if you've been listening and want to share the show, tag us. I love to see what everyone's listening to and what's resonating with you the most. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Catch soon.